Hello, my name is Priya Seturaman. I am a member of the Performance R&D organization at VMware and was part of the team that helped build vSphere 5. vSphere 5 was a monumental release for us. We invested over 2 million man hours of development effort into this release, delivering the most advanced virtualization platform in the market with numerous industry first features like storage DRS, storage and network IO controls, and profile driven storage. When I hear competitors like Microsoft make claims that their products have reached feature parity with vSphere, I make sure to look at these claims very closely to see if they have in fact closed the gap. On closer examination, I find that most often the facts do not support the claims. A checkbox comparison can make any two products appear similar. For example, using checkbox comparisons, one can make the 2010 Toyota Camry, America's best-selling mid-size sedan, appear equivalent to a 1985 Yugo. But if we dig a little deeper into the feature details, we see that the two products actually perform very differently. Similarly, when we take a closer look at claims made by Microsoft that Hyper-V has achieved feature parity with vSphere, we find that Hyper-V does not offer the same level of functionality and performance as vSphere. For example, in their checkbox comparison, Microsoft claims that Hyper-V's live migration feature is equivalent to vSphere's vMotion. Independent third-party tests have shown that, in fact, vSphere's vMotion is over five times faster than Hyper-V's live migration. It was far less disruptive to application performance and displayed a higher level of stability compared to Hyper-V. Microsoft is employing similar tactics with their next release in Windows Server 2012, playing the same checkbox game to make it appear that it is on par with VMware. But even in their next release, they still don't get some basic virtualization capabilities, right? For instance, they still employ a legacy quorum architecture for the HA high availability, where if half or more of the hosts in the HA cluster fail, the VMs can't restart on the other available hosts. Also, Windows Server 2012 with Hyper-V will still rely upon a large Windows parent partition that links virtualization to a general purpose operating system, requiring more patching of code unrelated to virtualization. And even when you compare VMware's current product, vSphere 5, which shipped in September 2011, to Microsoft's yet to be released Hyper-V3, you'll see that VMware vSphere 5 is still far ahead in critical areas like platform security, storage management, and business continuity. After my analysis, I can safely say that vSphere is still well ahead of the competition, but I encourage you to reach your own conclusion by examining the facts for yourselves. Thank you.